Hi, everyone. I'm David Tischler, a developer advocate at Bellina. I'm out in the middle of the desert north of Phoenix because I needed to come check on a server. Okay, fine. Not a server like you might be thinking, but it serves data to my application. I knew I needed to come pay this device a visit because I have the Datadog IoT agent installed on it, and I could see the health of the SD card gradually deteriorating over time. Now, you're probably already familiar with using Datadog to keep up with what's happening across your cloud infrastructure, data center environment, containers, or maybe the desktop and laptop fleet used by staff. But as you can see, my devices don't have those luxuries. In this talk, we'll cover what is Bellina, what is the Datadog IoT agent, and talk about one possible use case for it. But first, let me get this device fixed up and reinstalled and then head back home because it's really hot out here. As mentioned, I'm David Tischler, a developer advocate at Bellina. The very first thing most people ask is, who is Bellina? Well, if you've ever used Etcher to flash an SD card or a USB stick, you've actually stumbled upon us already. Etcher is our open source utility for flashing media, and it's fantastic. We do know, of course, you could use DD, but we prefer Etcher. It's a lot easier. Etcher, however, doesn't actually pay the bills and keep the lights on. What does is our Bellina Cloud platform for IoT devices. Bellina Cloud is a containerized workload infrastructure used to manage fleets of connected devices at scale. It makes it easy to develop and deploy your containers onto your devices, no matter where they're located. Gives you terminal access to the Raspberry Pis or Jetson Nanos or Beagle Boards or whatever you're using. You can see logs, you can see the container build information, and more. There's two other key components, though, Bellina OS and Bellina Engine. Bellina OS is our operating system. So instead of using Raspbian, we're actually using our own Yocto-based OS. And the engine is our Mobi-based container runtime. But what do we mean by IoT fleet management? Well, when you have a Raspberry Pi and it's sitting on your desk right in front of you, it's easy to work with. Hook up your monitor, hook up your mouse, hook up your keyboard, power it on, and away you go. But on an IoT project, when you might have dozens, hundreds, or thousands of devices, and they might not even all be the same size, shape, and platform, you need a way to continue to interact with those devices. And once they're no longer on your desk and instead completely distributed around the world, you need a way to maintain them. So Bellina Cloud gives you that platform to see your devices, interact with your devices, and update your devices. You can drill down into them, see the logs coming off, open up a terminal on them, and keep them online and available. Can also see where they're physically located. We talked about this earlier, just for a moment. Bellina OS is built on Yocto. Yocto is an embedded distribution specifically designed for IoT devices. It's minimal by design, that is on purpose. That actually means that it has lower RAM and resource requirements, and we include redundant root FS partitions. So, in case an update doesn't go quite according to plans, you can always roll back. Bellina Engine, as I mentioned, is the container runtime. That's what actually brings up, runs the containers, and it's based on Mobi, which is the open source contribution from Docker. Again, Bellina Engine, however, is minimal by design. Fewer resource requirements, lower RAM. Some of these IoT devices have as little as 512 megabytes of memory, things that in a data center are taken for granted. Let's get into the Datadog IoT agent, though. It's a small, lightweight version of the agent for edge and IoT devices. You can see the documentation link is here, but it is essentially the IoT agent trimmed down to run on smaller devices. It can run inside of a container, it can run alongside your existing workload, and it sends time series data up to the Datadog dashboard, just like the regular agent does. Let's talk about why we use it. Let's investigate an application. 
I'm choosing here Kerberos.io, which is an open source video surveillance utility, well, similar to a Nest Cam or um, one of the other open source projects that kind of mimic that functionality. You use a Raspberry Pi or similar, you can use a Jetson or other type of device, and you hook up a USB webcam. It's already containerized. They've already done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And it provides live video, recorded snippets when there's motion or activity, and things like that can overwhelm a small IoT device, especially something like a Raspberry Pi Zero or similar. I've thrown together a sample repository here in GitHub. You can go and clone that and kind of take a look at what I'm doing as far as deployment. But essentially, it's a pretty small Docker file that brings in a couple of basic utilities. You can see line three grabbing, you know, wget, curl, sudo. We then bring in the Datadog repository, up to apt get update it, copy a few files over, and then launch the installation and a start script to basically execute the Datadog IoT agent. We use the Bellina CLI to package that up and push it over to the devices. We already saw some of the devices are online here. And when I drill into a device, I can then, after it's after the container has been deployed, it does take a few minutes, of course, but after it's been deployed, I can then drill in and see the logs and I can see that the Datadog IoT agent is running and streaming up to the Datadog dashboard. So going over to that dashboard, I can see my devices have checked in. They're now reporting up their metrics. And when I drill into one of them here, I chose a Pi 3. I can see it's fairly idle. Might have had a couple of blips along the way, but it's not doing too, too much. That's about to change, though. The reason it's mostly idle upon deployment is because the application hasn't actually started. It's not really doing anything yet. It's just sitting at a login page. Rendering that login page is pretty easy work. However, once you do log in, you get a live stream coming off of the camera. Now that, of course, means that the CPU is processing the images, processing the frames as they come through. Um, you know, it could be 15, 30 frames per second, depends a little bit on the device, but also you can be certain network activity is occurring. Those frames coming across the network. And so sure enough, we go back and look in that dashboard, we see the CPU usage has come up and we can see network traffic has now begun. It's the center column, bottom panel. Logging back out, we return to a nominal state. We can see here when I stopped, when I closed the browser window, the CPU, CPU load immediately dropped off and our network usage actually dropped back down as well. Now let's go smaller. And the reason I say let's go smaller is because we're talking about IoT devices here. You gotta remember the use case, IoT devices at scale. There's several important factors to consider. The first one is power consumption. We want a lower power SOC if possible. We want fewer ports. We want as minimal of a hardware footprint as possible because that equals longer battery life. My device is out in the desert, yeah, there's space there, but a lot of IoT projects are constrained. So physical size is also important. Some of these installations have very limited space to work with. And finally, cost. At scale, the savings from transitioning from a $35 Pi to a $20 or even less unit add up. So let's duplicate the exact same steps on something smaller. The device you saw in the picture there was a um, Nano Pi Neo 2. It's $19.99, I think, if I remember correctly. But point being, it's much smaller and it provides robust hardware, just enough to run the application. We can see logging in, the CPU load increases. We can see network traffic begin, but all in all, it's surviving. It's not maxed out. If these charts showed 100% CPU utilization, then I'd be worried. But this little thing seems to be handling it just fine. 
you can see we hit 49.41% CPU load. That's still comfortable. And we can see the network traffic is flowing just fine. So our device performed great. Let's go smaller. Now, obviously there are some limits here, but understanding your application is critical in IoT. And Datadog IoT Agent gives you that visibility. Having the time series data in the Datadog dashboard can help you identify any trends, any issues, give you a view of your overall fleet health or just the single devices themselves when you drill down into them. And in the Bolina cloud world, we're all about pushing containers out to those devices at the edge. You can continue to iterate on your application. What if you add new features? You can then start to study the impact as you roll out those new containers. If something doesn't go quite according to plans, you can revert that change, push out a new container, and you can sort of monitor the impact of your version bumps along the way. So to recap, the Datadog IoT agent, small, lightweight version of the agent for edge and IoT devices. You can install it in a container alongside your existing workloads. You can install it directly in with your application if you're more comfortable doing it that way. But all the normal Datadog functions are there, dashboards, alarms, everything works like usual, and it's great for monitoring your device health. It can help you select your IoT hardware based on your application performance, which includes power consumption, cost, and size. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, just reach out. Thanks.